This is the aftermath of DIY gone wrong. But it's not in the way you might think. This wasn't from any kind of material explosion or even a construction accident. It is from the lack of qualified and quality building work. Fueled by a generous helping of greed by generating more rent and indifference from the local authorities not stopping it from happening. But a building that rescue workers are scouring through wasn't really that old and the collapse didn't happen a long time ago. It is in fact the year 2022 and the building was barely 10 years old. Although bad quality was the cause, we'll hold on to the end to find out if there was more to blame. This video wouldn't have been possible without my Patreon and YouTube members. If you'd like early access and add free access to my videos, then why not give it a try? So without any further delay, my name is John and welcome to Plainly Difficult. Today we're looking at the Changsa apartment block collapse. I am great at DIY. Everyone I know tells me this. My missus is all like, John, you're so great, please don't do any DIY, as it will show up all the other parts of the house that have been done by so-called professionals. So shoddy construction is not something I'd ever do. Well, if you believe that, I've got a London bridge to sell you. The thing is, I know my limits. As such, it's best getting in someone who's good at the job. And paying for quality work in some cases is cheaper in the long run. But sometimes, why pay top price when you can do it yourself? Well, that is exactly what today's story is about. Background. This is the city of Changsha, Hunan province, China. It's a massive city of some 10 million people, and in true Chinese form, this only makes it the 17th most populous city in the country. Our story takes place in the district of Wangchen, and in 2012, the construction is starting of a new building. Now, I don't know what was there before this building, but I do know, as according to China Daily, was that the owners of the new building were Wu Kuisheng and his son Wu Xingyang. The building was originally made of brick and concrete, coming in at a whopping five stories in height. Plans, unsurprisingly, weren't made. At least any trace of them doesn't exist today. But in a brief report on the collapse of self-built house on the 29th of April 2022 in Changsha, China, by Nanying Wang et al shows in an analysis of a similar building in the area that there were no internal columns but only transverse beams. This meant that all the forces from each level were transferred into the brickwork around the perimeter of the building. For the original structure, this possibly would have been enough structural rigidity. However, towards the late 2010s, a few additions would be made to the block. By 2018, the Wu family had rented out most of the building to various tenants, including a couple of food outlets and reportedly even a private cinema. But how to increase your rental income, eh? Well, how about add a few more floors? More floors, more money. Simples. This would consist of an additional brick and concrete floor, matching what had been already being built. This extra floor wouldn't be the end though, as quietly the Wu family continued to build an illegal addition. The local authorities didn't really enforce building standards at the time, although the wider government had brought in a one-year nationwide plan to target illegal buildings in the Changsha, but the Changsha authority didn't really chase this up. As said in China Daily, they, the urban management officers, verbally warned the Wu family on six occasions, with only one instance involving an official rectification notice requiring an immediate halt to construction and a meeting with the urban management team. However, this notice wasn't actually chased up. Eventually, between 2020 and 2022, the building was topped out at eight floors. Another two floors had been added using a steel sheeting. This is a bit more temporary in nature. The thinking behind it is that if ordered to dismantle the illegal structure, it wouldn't cause much damage to the existing building. But regardless, it did add significant weight. One of the building's tenants wanted to operate a small hotel. To accomplish this, the Wu family got in Zhangda Engineering Testing Company, who said the building met safe usage conditions, as said in China Daily. But the company, although giving approval to the building, didn't actually use any equipment, or even have the ability to properly inspect buildings in the first place. It would later turn out that they were just paying off officials for the certificates. The extra floors increased the building's dead load, however due to the floors being placed to the rear of the building, this unevenly put pressure on the structure's foundation. 
This was essentially a ticking time bomb, which would go off on the 29th of April 2022. The disaster. It's the morning of the 29th of April 2022, and a tenant of the self-built multi-use block has noticed something a little bit concerning. Some cracks had appeared. Concerned with this, the tenant reported to the Wu family, who promptly fobbed it off by saying some steel reinforcement would fix the issue. Whether the fixes were done or not, um, I can't seem to find out any information. But what we do know was that just a couple of hours later, it wouldn't have made much of a difference. Just before noon, the building suddenly collapsed into its footprint. The steel sheeting on top of the building slammed down as the perimeter walls of the building disintegrated. Within moments, all that left was just a cloud of dust and a two-story high mound of rubble. The collapse damaged the buildings on either side. Quickly, locals and emergency workers rushed into the scene to try and help and rescue any survivors. The best part of 70 people were thought to be inside, and as rescue works were undertaken, shouts from below the rubble could be heard. During the rescue efforts, two of the neighbouring buildings were evacuated and had to be shored up against collapse themselves. It would take roughly 131 hours of searching before the final survivor was dragged out of the rubble. In total, 10 would survive the collapse, leaving 54 lives lost. In the collapse, one of the building's owners died. However, the son, Wu Jingyong, survived, and he, along with eight others, would be arrested over the following days. Their arrests hinted that the collapse was more of a symptom of a much wider issue, that is, of corruption and carelessness. The Aftermath the collapse brought unwanted international attention onto the city of Changsha. As such, the government sought out to make an example of those who they thought were responsible. Of the nine arrested, five were on the charge of falsifying documents. This was the fake certification the building received from Zhangde Engineering. However, I haven't been able to find out much on the punishments that were handed out, apart from that wider officials were being demoted around the same time and moved to other departments of other local authorities. Some of the people that were demoted, Zheng Jianjing, the mayor of Hunan province's capital, who was removed from his post. Now for the cause of the collapse. It is pretty simple. It was a severely overloaded structure, which at best was poorly built and at worst dangerous before any extra levels were added. Wu Jingyong would be quoted in China Daily saying, We were stupid and we really committed a sin. I didn't know the difference between a solid wall and an empty brick wall until after the accident. Overloaded without extra supports in the form of load bearing columns meant that all of the building's weight was transferred to the perimeter wall. On top of that, the fifth story and above had no structural beams. This meant that the floors had little load bearing capacity. The foundations are also a potential area of weakness, as during late April, as usually around this time of year, Changsha enters a period of high precipitation, which softens the ground up. Unsurprisingly, the building didn't have deep enough foundations for its weight, thus uneven settlement of the building at its heavier sections increased the chance of structural failure. But ultimately, the cause was of poor enforcement of the regulation of buildings, because if you don't enforce the rules, people tend to generally just bodge things. Not even intentionally, most of the time it's just purely through ignorance. But it's still just as deadly. This is why it takes years to study to be an architect or structural engineer. So it's scale time. It's going to be a 5, and this is what I've got for my disaster card. Do you agree? Let me know below. This is a plain of production. All videos on the channel, Creative Commons, Attribution, Share Alike License. Plain Difficult videos are produced by me, John, in a currently wet and mild corner of Southern London, UK. And all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching, and Mr. Music, can you play us out please?